Hey, Dina. Hey, Natalie. Uh, do you like scary movies? Um, yeah. Hell yeah, you do. We watch scary movies once a week, uh, for spooky time. Yes. Do you think our tolerators like scary movies? Oh, for sure. Who doesn't? Because they're the fucking coolest. Exactly. But, like, do you ever find yourself after a scary movie thinking really hard about the themes that are represented in those horror movies? Um, nope. Small brain, no think. What about how women are represented in the horror genre? Oh, nope. I should. I probably should. How about how easy it is for me to say whore instead of horror and how anxious I am about it all the time? (laughs) Well, maybe what you should do and what our tolerators should do, if you're a horror fan, consider checking out Plug It Up a podcast about horror tropes that explore the monstrous feminine. Do you know what the monstrous feminine is? No. It's this trope in horror where when a woman, like, comes of age, she becomes a monster. What? Uh Uh-huh. So, I hate that. In Plug It Up, it's a gender-inclusive feminist space that explores the monstrous feminine with humor. And vulnerability, which the tolerators are already funny and vulnerable. They sure are. The host, Caitlin Grant, who's super great, looks at the horrors of coming of age via the monstrous menstruation. Did I say menstruation right? Monstrous menstruation trope in movies. Do you know what that is? No. It's when a woman gets her period and becomes a monster. (laughs) Wow, that's kind of messed up. It's happened in movies like Carrie, Ginger Snaps, and The Witch. So it's happened so many times, and I haven't noticed that I have to listen to a podcast to be aware that this is how women are portrayed in horror movies. Yeah, I'm kind of embarrassed. (laughs) Caitlin also tackles the potential terrors of parenthood. Yikes. We know how I feel about parenthood. Via the monstrous motherhood. Can you kind of guess what that one would be? Oh, no. They become a mother and then become a monster? You hit it. (laughs) Dang. I'm learning. Look how much I'm already learning from this podcast. I swear that this is what would happen after I had a baby. (laughs) Oh, definitely. So that trope happens in movies like Rosemary's Baby, The Omen, and The Babadook. So if you're a tolerator and you really like horror... And very candid guest stories because also she asks her guest at the end of every episode what a horrible period story that they have is. Oof. We can all. We all got them. Give it a listen. Plug It Up is available wherever you get your podcasts. Tolerators, this is To All the Men I've Tolerated Before with your hosts, Natalie Katona and Dina Alcati. On this podcast, in case you're new, Dina and I explore some of the impactful relationships we've had with men. We then thank them for the lessons they gave us and leave them, ourselves, or the world with some positive manifestations because we would like a brighter future. Today we're going to be deep diving into all the ways that we have done something just so we can get a little attention. So we'll be focusing on our behaviors instead of male male behaviors. Yes. Yes. A little look into how we weren't the greatest. Big old yikes. Big old yikes. I feel like you should go first this week because this episode came about because you (laughs) didn't finish last week. And feminism dictates that all women should finish. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Oh my gosh. I love that. We should put that on a t-shirt. We should put it on a t-shirt. That would be great. All right. Go on a notebook. Yeah. So last episode, we talked a little bit about like, uh, our online you know situation mm-hmm. what we did online and so 
uh, something that I used to do purely for attention was in video games, specifically MMOs, because, and now you know what an MMO is, but for everybody out there, it's like massively multiplayer online games, like I World of Warcraft. Why, I'm so bad at acronyms. Why would you think I don't know. I, I know really what an know. MMO is? I don't speak acronym. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, it's basically a giant online game. And there's um, a lot more community in games like that versus, like, something like Call of Duty or something, you know? So um, I would always just flirt with anybody, like, literally anybody. And I would put on, like, a mask of being, like, this cute, super femme girl. And it was really just a poor reflection of my mental state, but I feel so bad Because most of the time, here's the kicker, I didn't even like them. Like, I didn't even like these people. I just wanted the compliments, the attention, the gifts, the whatever. I don't know. I think it just filled a void. Yeah. You know, it made me feel good about myself. It's kind of like a, do you get a dopamine, like, thing from that? Of somebody giving you compliments? I mean, I get dopamine from all the wrong places. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I mean... It's hard to dictate anymore in this new world where women are able to be their own person and have their own goals and their, like, own set of values and personality traits where it's like, what is it that brings me joy and what brings me a chemical reaction because I was traumatized in my youth. <laughs> exactly. I think it was really just me, like, wanting validation. And there was, I remember this one time when I was, like, in late high school. I met up with this guy I met online. I had been flirting with him. And Nally, there was, to me, I have to put this out there, to me, there was nothing attractive about this guy. Like, nothing, I feel like. Was but, he what I would call a basement dweller? Yes, I really think he was. And so, but one time, I don't know why, I agreed to go out with him. I was like, whatever. And so we went to a movie and it was so cringy because the whole time, like from the moment I met him, the moment I saw him in person, I was like, oh, I don't feel anything here. Yeah. Was My that Alex- Oliver? That was Alexa just got triggered. I was going to say, it sounded like a person, but I know that <laughs> Oliver can, like, make a groan, and I was like... Yeah. <laughs> this like, Alexa, there- she just got triggered by something. I was like, is there a man in your bed? <laughs> Did you bring no. a man to recording? Girl, the only thing in my bed is laundry and stuffed animals. <laughs> like, it's so bad. <laughs> um, so we went to this movie, and, like, the whole time I was like, not feeling it but this guy was feeling it a little too much and like was trying to like you know we were like the only people in the theater so he was trying to go for it you know and i was like not having it and that is the most uncomfortable situation of my life because i literally wanted nothing to do with him it was so bad was he trying to get handsy he was getting handsy i was trying to I've only had the luck to be getting handsy in a movie theater the one time to Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. (laughs) And it's all for you, Chadwick Moseman. Hell yeah. And honestly, like, it is one of my top five memories. There's something about, like, a dark yet public place. Oh, definitely. I would love to remake a good memory in the movie theater, <laughs> please, because this one, not it. Was not into it at all. Um, so that was awful. And I it really like brought to light how bad my attention seeking was. I was like, damn, I really gotta stop. Like with because I feel like I didn't care about their feelings. And I have to say this was like a long time ago. And I I feel like I'm in a better place now, but I still think I have, like, some issues with wanting to feel validated by other people. And I think that's the source of my attention seeking. Do you think that that's why you have a healthier relationship with the simp culture than I do? Because, like, to me, it all seems very fakey and, like, you're just trying to fill a daddy-sized hole in my heart. (laughs) but 
if you're a person who has an attention seeking past and hasn't like really like gotten into the ins and outs of where that dopamine's coming from, like I could see where like simp culture is like a really great safe playground for you. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like I just I don't know. I guess I maybe maybe but i definitely don't like simps like i'm definitely not into like that clingy behavior anymore like where mm-hmm. so i don't want someone to like tell me you know or valid tell me i'm pretty tell me all these things i don't seek that anymore and i find it rather annoying yeah but it still does happen um i will do next to nothing for a male compliment but if i'm at target uh, and a rando lady like gives me a compliment and makes my entire week i'm like oh me yeah me you picked me out of the entire target you're right <laughs> me? me it does feel good when you get a random compliment from someone you don't know it's great mm-hmm. so i think my uh, another way it's kind of manifested was in in summer of 2020 which we oh, call the dark date. ages Yes, the dark ages of my life, <laughs> just because COVID was happening. <laughs> but there was a while there, like, where I wanted, I was seeking sexual attention, and I did have some casual relationships, like, during that time. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time, this guy that I got really close with, and we were, like, friends with benefits, basically, he came over one time, we hung out for a few hours, we did the dirty yeah. But even after, we just kind of hung out and talked. And when he left, I felt like I had hit, been hit by a bus. Like, I was like, in terms of my energy was exhausted. Like, you know, whenever you feel like you're around people that you can't be yourself with and you're masking. I'm sure people have heard of masking where you're like putting on this yeah. A, I mask, a, a mask yeah i mask whenever i'm not one-on-one with one of my family members one-on-one we're having a great time but if you include everyone's energy right oh. <laughs> and so i i think for that whole interaction i had been masking to get him to like like me mm-hmm. and to give me attention and all these things and then whenever he left I just, I felt like I had no energy. Like, all of it just left. I felt like I was going to pass out. And I basically just laid on the bed and went to sleep. And I think it was, it was really just to get attention. And because I couldn't be my most authentic self. Like, I was just seeking this sexual attention. Yeah. And then when he left, I was like, I can be myself again. And I, uh, looking... Do you know specifically, like, how you acted different because he was at your house? Like, did you change the tone of your voice? Did you, like, put Uh, more effort into your appearance? Well, it was, like, it felt like the whole time Mm -hmm. I was trying to just, like, get him to give me attention. Like, to to be sexual or to be flirty or to be, like, ooh. Like, just really on the whole time. And looking back on it, I'm not sure if I, like actually enjoyed it because of the sex or if I just wanted attention Mm -hmm. so that I wouldn't be alone. Did that go on longer than the one encounter or was it a one and done situation? No, it went on longer. Yeah. But it was was after, like in the moment, I don't think I realized why I was so exhausted by it. Yeah. Um, And now it's interesting because now I feel like, I am now comfortable being my authentic self with just me that I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't need all those things. Like, I don't need to be attention seeking or anything like that. I can actually look for someone that I can be myself with and, you know, not just for the sexual portion of that. Because like you said, I mean, you alluded to it that... um, I do have sexual trauma. And so that does lead me to want sexual attention. Like I have a lot of issues with like sexual, just things in general. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I use sex as a way to validate myself a lot. And that's not a good behavior. So I think I'm, I'm moving slowly away from that, which is nice. One of the like lingering active, not activities, but mindsets 
that like will take hold if I'm in a dating relationship with a man is if we don't have sex right away, I feel like something is wrong and needs to be fixed. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why hasn't he kissed me? Why hasn't he groped me? Why are we not having sex? And it was Stephanie from our motherhood in the time of the pandemic. You know, my for tolerators who are new, she's my best friend from childhood. But when I was with the shame guy and he kept like, we had sex and then he put off sex and I'd be like, but why aren't we having sex? And she goes, women... She goes, especially women who like grew up hearing the things that you and I would hear about our bodies and ourselves and our values. She goes, sex is our currency. Our bodies are our currency. Which is so sad to think about that we think that we need, especially a man to validate us or even just anybody to validate us. It sucks. Or it's like... I would get all tripped up with shame guy. Is it like, do I want to have sex with you? Am I actually just like super horny and anyone will do because we're in a quarantine? Or am I like literally just trying to band-aid a situation because I know I'm not into you, but maybe my hormones could trick me into being into you because I've already invested into the story that I've created. Right. I, I wonder, you know my next relationship if if i'll be more comfortable like not looking at sex as a way to be like oh he loves me or she loves me or whoever loves me Mm -hmm. or they they they're gonna stay with me because this or they think i'm attractive if they have sex with me and all this stuff into actually just wanting sex because you love the activity and it's fun and you want to be more intimate with your partner and all the things that's what i want to get to not my body like needing my body (laughs) <laughs> to have sex with someone just to feel like I'm useful, <laughs> basically. And I, right. And I will say that quarantine was tricky. It was tricky mm. navigating sex during quarantine because I didn't know that this, like, med- like once I saw it, it made perfect sense. I was watching an episode of Grey's Anatomy, my true medical professional. I love Grey's Anatomy so much. Have you watched the quarantine season? I have not. No, I haven't. You don't keep up with it on Hulu. No, we're in quarantine. And one of the residents said the term touch starved. And I realized that like, I was like ramped up to a million whenever shame guy rubbed my shoulders or rubbed my body or whatever. Like, but it never translated to me actually being aroused enough to where like my parts liked having his parts in me like we talked about how like they would just like it would hurt and everything would contract and like it wasn't great and I could never understand because I'm like my whole body is lit up whenever he just like touches me in a non-sexual just kind of like intimate way and then when I was watching Grey's Anatomy I was like fuck why didn't anyone tell me that was a medical condition we were touch starved My body was literally reacting to the fact that we hadn't touched anyone in almost a year. Ugh, the worst. Mm Mm-hmm. I just want to know what it would be like to have sex without feeling like you have to. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's weird because I think the relationship where I didn't feel like I had to, I wanted to, and I felt very empowered in the sex was my most toxic relationship ain't that a bitch ain't that some fuckery (laughs) it do fucking be like that right and we haven't talked about that guy yet so i don't want to go into too many details because his episode is coming down the pike yeah maybe Maybe with the guy that I knew in high school who we eventually became friends with benefits i didn't feel like i had to Looking back on, am I still there? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I I have period fatigue today. My brain cannot. It's okay. I've got the PMS fatigue. Um, (laughs) Maybe, like, looking back on it, I realized that it was definitely, like, the trauma of my parents' abrupt divorce and me having to rewrite the narrative on my entire childhood definitely led me to fill that hole in my heart 
with his dick. But <laughs> I think it was a safe it was the safest bet in that situation because for six years I knew eventually he and I would have sex. And it just happened to be when I was at my trauma ridden point. <laughs> oh damn. But yeah, that's that's basically uh the best examples I had. What do you got? Okay, well, this might come as a shock to our listeners um, because of who I am on social media, but I have a very fickle relationship with receiving attention. I think it was at Book Club, Dina, where someone said the word, what if we were more humble? And I was immediately like, you can't ask humility out of me. It's one of my childhood trauma points. But basically... I come from a family on one side of my family where we're very loud, we're very open, we're very emotional, everything's on like, our hearts are always on our sleeves and we're all really screaming everything that we're feeling and thinking. And then on my other side of the family, there's a lot of like secrecy and things that are kept under wraps and nothing is really talked about out in the open, but we all know that it's going on, but everyone keeps telling you that it's okay. That's the worst feeling. Like, mm-hmm. I hate when shit is like under the surface. Yeah. Like, everybody knows, but nobody's talking about it. It's the freaking worst. Like a painful pimple. Ugh. So I, my attitude and my exuberance over life, it tends to go more with that loud, obnoxious side of the family. However, when you're intermingling these worlds, people get uncomfortable. So whenever I was my very dramatic, exuberant self, and I wanted to take a moment to shout out something I had done or I was good at, I would get reprimanded. And I would be told, why are you drawing attention to yourself? Why do you think that people want to hear that? Why do you think that people want to know that? Why are you causing so much hurt for everyone else? Now someone's going to be like upset because they didn't get to do that. What the hell? Uh Uh-huh. And what I learned through my journey with the artist way And through years of counseling is that it's created this narrative in my mind that when I'm receiving positive attention, it's because I've manipulated people and almost lied to them to give me that attention. Oh, interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a real big mind fuck because for the longest time I was told, stop thinking you're so great, kid. Can you give me an example of where you did that? Sure. Um, one time I was at a family member's house and this family member had not gone to college. And she asked me, because it, it was the Christmas of my first year of college. Right, right. She asked me how my first semester went. And I said, oh, it went really well. I made high honors. I was really close to Dean's list. So I guess I'll try for that next time. And I told her about some of my classes. I'm sure I talked about something. And when I, when we either got to the hotel or to wherever my little part of the family could be, my little part of the family, I was told, why would you go on and on about college like that and just start bragging and boasting like you're hot shit? You know your aunt didn't go to college. How do you think that makes her feel? my goodness what the hell right um and it's a lot wrapped up into when you have loud and bolsterous family members sarcasm comes into play and my mom my mom my aunts and my uncles they did a really great job of they did a really great job of exemplifying comedy to us and how comedy can work and how to lay up a bit and make a moment funny or whatever they didn't teach us great read the room or like what children should say versus what adults say so there would be a lot of moments where someone would lay up a joke and then 12 year old Natalie would come in with the punchline, and then someone had to go 12 year olds can't make the punchline. but why 
Well, because, you know, it was either like, it was either like talking about living in sin, bop, 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 and then you'd razz on one of your family members who you knew was living with a partner or whatever. Gotcha. So, like, Kit, and I see it with friends who are raising kids or whatever, it's really hard, and it's part of the reason I don't think I ever want to raise kids because I never want to not be living the bit. But it is really hard to teach kids, like, it was appropriate for me to say it. I've had a relationship with someone for 20 years. It wasn't appropriate coming out of a 10-year-old's mouth. Yeah, I see. The way this manifested in my relationships when I was younger and around men that I was attracted to or men that I had connections with is instead of being a person who wanted to celebrate myself or be really funny or be like really vibrant, I would go the complete opposite direction because I was like, oh, people really only want to give you attention if they feel bad about you. Because if they feel good about you, they feel bad about themselves. But if you feel bad and they help you, then they get to feel good and you get to feel good and everyone's getting attention. So I was like really morose or sullen to get attention. And I would like pick fights. Um, the guy that I slept with after knowing him for six years in high school and for my entire college career, I don't even remember what he did, but I know he said something stupid and I hit him with my purse because like we grew up in the weird cusp of the nineties and the early two thousands where like smacking one another was real flirty. Like you were always told like, if a boy pushes you, he loves you. So I <laughs> didn't hear, but girls should just fall if boys push them <laughs> and be damsels. I would want to get slap happy for the dopamine. So like he and I would get like slap happy or whatever. But one day I got pissed and I hit him with my purse and I had giant sunglasses in there because I always do. <laughs> I always yep. do. Just part of your character trait. And that's what hit him in the knee like if it had just been like a little bit more of an emptier purse it would have been playful <laughs> but because of these like big sunglasses that's what hit him right in the knee and he crumpled and i got into my friend's car and i was like drive and <laughs> <laughs> you just literally did a hit and run <laughs> I did. because i was mad and my friend looked at me and he goes are we gonna go get him i was like no he knows what he did he on the floor he can crawl to the car we can give it 30 more seconds, but he's going to be left here. That's what's happening. <laughs> he knows what he said. I don't know what he said anymore 20 years later, but, <laughs> but he knows what he said and his ass is getting left in this parking lot. And it was very much like dramatic highs like that. Yeah. Um, With my first boyfriend, I would pick a fight with him and just be like sullen for no reason. I can't even like think of a reason. And then he would like buy me candy and I'd be like, well, I guess you think that that makes it up or something. And just like keep like, I became like the worst sitcom housewife. Oh no. And, and like, and it's awful. And like, who wants to date that lady? But and then when I wasn't, and then when I kind of got over that, when it's like, hey, like, it's not really great being the soul in asleep. I slept for two whole years in high school. I was like, that's how I was trying to get attention. Where's Natalie? She's asleep. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> someone should check away. on her. <laughs> She's okay? asleep. Is anyone okay? So when I was over being the soul in and morose chick, and I kind of like moved out of my household where my ever present narrative was like, dull yourself down, like make the people around you comfortable, never believe that you've got something that someone else doesn't. I became like the complete opposite. And I became a clown. I would just make a mockery of myself for the amusement of others. I was very vulgar. I was a very vulgar woman, just like like on purpose like if someone was going to make the dick joke it was going to be me i 
my whole story of my early to mid 20s was, well, I'm just a hot mess. Never going to get married. Never going to have a real relationship. I'll just be the slutty single friend till I die. Sleeping with no one. is not, <laughs> not leaving this party getting any strange, but I'm the slutty single friend who's the hot ass mess. Mm -hmm. That's a mood. That's a mood. And I mean, something you said triggered this memory too. I had very fast and loose boundaries when it came to older men, especially teachers in my perimeter. I had a teacher. He was only, I think he was less than 10 years older than me. And we almost had the same birthday, but like, he was a first year teacher when I was a freshman and like I would just like say ridiculous things to him like I took a childhood development class and we had to like run a daycare and we made cupcakes for the kids at the daycare so I showed up into his room I don't even have a class or whatever it's a passing period and he goes why are you covered in cupcake batter and I went Maybe I'm your cupcake. And just like stupid shit like that. <laughs> Jesus. And because, and like, honestly, like I got to give it up for myself. I'm funny and I'm cute. So no one would go cut your shit out. Like there was no one like, and I don't fault them because it never got weirder than Natalie would throw out a one liner and then we'd all laugh. But maybe one of them. <laughs> could have gone cut your shit out you don't talk to grown men that way yeah that's that feels like a lapse in, in yeah. right in yeah. judgment i like he was the one that i had the worst amount of boundaries with because he was young and so like i felt like i could like push it i used to like he used to bring me a donut every friday because i bullied him into it i noticed one day he had a donut and I was like, I like sprinkles on my donuts. And I asked it. He goes, yeah, I get myself a donut every Friday. And every day I would tell him, I like sprinkles on my donuts. I like sprinkles on my donuts. <laughs> what kind of donuts do I like? The ones with sprinkles on them. And then every Friday there'd be a donut for me. Oh my God. Yeah. And in college, there was another professor where it was just like, Another way I like to get attention is I like to make introverted men wildly uncomfortable. If oh, you are an good. awkward man in my vicinity, I love to be a vulgar pirate wench at a tavern <laughs> and make you as uncomfortable as if I were stripping in your lap, just through my mouth, just like through the words that are coming out of my mouth. So <laughs> he... Like, he was just like, I would make him bring me soda to class. He drank off-brand Dr. Pepper. It was called Dr. Thunder, and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Dr. Th Dr. Thunder. It's a Walmart Thunder. brand of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Why is that amazing? Dr. And it was Thunder. called Dr. Thunder. And, like, the way that I would say it, I'd, like, cock my whole shoulders back, and I'd be like, hey, I want a Dr. Thunder. I just, like, dead I am. <laughs> oh, my God. And he'd bring me one. And one time he had back problems um, from an old sports injury or something. And like he he would skip lecture a lot, which made me believe that I would also get to go back and take a nap after class. Because if you're not showing up to lecture, you're not showing up to discuss it. And then he'd show up at the end of it. And one day he went, are you happy to see me, Natalie? And I went, why would I be happy to see you? <laughs> why would I be happy to see you? I thought I was getting a nap. Two Dr. Thunders. <laughs> two Dr. Immediately. Thunder. I docked you too. I mean, I would show up at his office hours just to make fun of him. I would, Damn. Like, but it was always just like flirty banter back and forth because no one looked me in the eye and went, cut it out. You don't talk to grown men that way. Crazy. And I would pick out his shoe and his tie combos for lecture too. He'd bring like options. <laughs> He'd be like, which tie's better? I'm like, why am I fulfilling this role for you? <laughs> what is... Well, he certainly was feeding into it. Right. 
What the and hell? Like, again, they're what, like, I got a donut every Friday. I got a Dr. Thunder every class. I got to pick out your shoes. I would make, oh, the younger guy, I would make fun of his outfits. One time he was wearing black on black. And every time he walked past me, it was like black jeans and a black button up. And every time he'd walk pa- past me, I'd go, hello, my name is Johnny Cash. <laughs> <laughs> Called him Johnny Cash for the rest of the day. When other kids would say, hi, mister, and then his teacher name, i go, no, that's Johnny Cash. <laughs> Ask him for oh an God. autograph. Ask him for an autograph. It's like you bullied them and somehow they... <laughs> I did for attention. I don't know. I think he also wore denim on denim one time, which is a true fashion crime. And I think I, I think I sang rhinestone cowboy to him whenever he was in the hall. I'd be like, like a rhinestone cowboy or like a honky. No, not honky tonk, but donk a donk. What's that Billy Ray Cyrus song? Um, don't oh achy breaky heart i'd be like don't tell my heart my achy breaky heart and he scurry into another room because <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'm oh. bullying him another like grown ass man who was a teacher figure in my life who i used to i mean this is this is the only way i passed pre-cal <laughs> i couldn't do pre-calculus to save my goddamn life and luckily, luckily enough, for the second half of the class, we had a student teacher, and I didn't even notice that the idiot was wildly uncomfortable whenever he had to talk to me, like he'd get flushed and nervous or whatever. A girl behind me brought it up one day. She's like, he can't talk to you. And I was like, what? She goes, he gets like flustered and he like, he, he gets nervous. And like, that's why I'm like, is that why I'm not learning pre-calculus? Because he can't show me how to do it. You can't actually look at me. Right. Like one day we were both wearing purple. And I was like, hey, it's real great that you and I could be matching today. I feel like super connected with you. Did not do the homework, just so you know. I would get like C's on things that I had never even looked at. <laughs> Because you can't give the girl who can't do calculus an A, but you can give her a C. (laughs) Damn. And he would get, like, really flustered. And I would talk to him certain ways. I can really only recall, like, flirting with him when we wore purple at the same time or whatever. Um, I would sit, you know, the way that you sit where it's, like, the girls are just presented. Yeah. And then, like, make him bend over the girls to then try to do my calculus and I will say that there was a part in his student teaching where he had to walk the halls and just observe other teachers instead of actively teaching and I was in the hallway because I also ran wild and I was one of those really good kids and really smart kids who the school would just like let Rome like why wasn't I in class I was never in class <laughs> I was never in class um so I was walking around bored and I ran into him in the hallway and he went hey why are you in the hallway I went hey why are you in the hallway aren't you supposed to be learning how to teach the the future youth I'm a senior and he went aren't you graduating in a couple of weeks and I went yeah uh I was like no thanks to you and your subpar teaching of pre-cal <laughs> And he went, yeah, I'm just like, and he named the like school that was just like the up the highway because that's where he went to school. He's like, I got a new futon in like my, our apartment area. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. I was like, are you trying to tell me that you're, and then like I, what then the I fuck? get indignant. And then I get indignant, right? Like I look him right in the eye and I go, I'm sorry, are you trying to tell me that you're new and your new futon's impressive and I should come and see it. And then he got all flustered and ran away. <laughs> Why? Is that really the reason he brought that up? I don't know. He got all flustered and ran away. I can only assume. <laughs> That's really such a strange thing. Yeah. To say. I mean, my need to either get attention because I'm the stolen girl who's so sad and could really only. 
um, feel a thing today if you looked at me or this like, oh, we're going balls to the wall and I'm going to be the most vulgar chick and out there chick you've ever met. It has gotten me into some tricky situations. I don't know if we'll do an episode on grooming, but I've definitely been groomed, not by any, maybe the pre-cal student teacher, not by any of the dudes that I'm talking about today, but definitely like, and the thing about like attention seeking is when you're looking for attention and then you get attention for from an inappropriate source, like your brain tells you, oh no, we're liking this. I mean, I guess that's why it's called grooming. They wrote an entire TV show called Cruel Summer about it. Um, but yeah, like my attention seeking has really come down to just a lack of of boundaries it was a lot of lack of filter like whatever i thought in my head if i knew it was funny it was coming right out of my mouth right and the consequences be damned and to be fair i didn't serve as many consequences as i probably should have but that's probably i mean a lot of people can probably relate to that so when i think about myself in high school i like, I wasn't hot shit. I wasn't, like, the girl who turned heads. I never even had a date to the dance or whatever. So, like, to even get, like, a small micro of attention, it almost felt like I was winning. Like, again, I was cheating mm -hmm. at the game. Like, oh. Oh, did I get a little bit of attention? Me? The girl who not three years ago had the Lion King perm? Okay. The little chubby girl with a with too many boobs and too little ass. Okay. Yeah. So you were using it to validate that you could that you could still get attention. Right. That I could still get it. Get it. Get it. And now, when I mean, like one of my guy friends will tell you that if I'm telling a story, it really just means that I'm telling lie upon lies because I love to embellish a story. I love to have been barked at by a chihuahua and been all, and be like, did you see that Akita come out of the bushes for me? <laughs> <laughs> turns into a great Dane or something. Right. The elephant <laughs> broke from the zoo and came charging at me. And our one guy from will be like, that was a peacock. It was a peacock and it barely brushed by you, but thank you. So like when it comes to attention seeking now, because I do feel like we all deserve a little attention for something. It's definitely like my larger than life storytelling. It's this podcast and taking a chance that people are going to be interested to hear my stories. But like I said earlier in the episode, like, you have to think about it. Like, when I flirt with a guy, am I flirting with a guy because I like him? Or is he reminding me of a teacher figure that I once flirted with when I was 14? Like, is it just a trauma and the dopamine? It's hard to say. It's hard to say because I do get, like, I love nothing more than to get wrapped up in a new friendship, in a new relationship, when it's all high, 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 and anything is possible, and I've made up 20 things about you that I know are true. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> and I am, like, starting to work through this narrative that, like, well, people are only in my life because I've tricked you. With, like, my stand-up bit. Like, it's all still just make-believe. Well, that's not true. Well, that's what my therapist says. But I pay her, so. <laughs> so who's really to say at this point? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, like, I mean, it happened during quarantine. I made this whole new group of friends. And then the one minute that I felt like I said something stupid or acted in a way that was, like, too much for everybody, I was like... Well, they're only hanging out with me because, like, no one actually wants to tell anyone that they don't want to hang out with them anymore. You just keep, like, people just come into your life and you just keep hanging out with them. And then my counselor volleys back with, you've dumped friends before. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm, like, the outlier. Like, I'm an asshole. <laughs> like, I don't care about anybody. <laughs> That's not true. Like, I've dumped a lot of, like, 
I've dumped friends. Yeah. A lot, actually. And she's like, if people wanted to dump you, they would just dump you. Yeah, and that's right. Like, if your podcast sucked, no one would listen to the podcast. If, like, even with Shame Guy and the really most toxic relationship and all of the guys that I've dated, it's like, they wanted to be there right up until they didn't. They all wanted to be right within my orbit right up until they went, I flew too close to the sun. <laughs> She burns a little. She burns. Yeah. So it's a it's a real trip being a woman who wants to take up space without knowing how to take up space. They don't teach you. They don't teach us how to take up space. No. They tell us to be smaller. They tell us to be smaller. They tell us to be more humble. They tell us that, like, no one likes a girl who shows off. That's something I've heard. No one likes a showy off girl. Boys don't like girls who show off. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Boys like girls that they can push. I think like the first five minutes of he's just not into you. He's just not that into you played into that. They were like, why do we tell girls that if he's shoving you and calling you names, that's romance. That's why we're all fucked. Right. This is where it all fucking starts. What the fuck? Yeah, I wasn't gonna go into all of that teacher-student bullshit, but I do blame Stephanie, because she was going through yearbooks last night, and I was like, we can't do do this, we cannot do this, (laughs) and like, and we've just been talking about it, about like, our attitudes and the way that we were always quick to make a joke, and it was usually a dirty joke, and we had no, like, We had no filter and we were going to do anything to make someone else feel a thing because then it meant that we got to feel a thing. And the thing about being like a high achieving kid and a not so attractive kid is that you do get into this dangerous place where the people around you just kind of let you do it. When my grandma died, I stopped going to school. And the assistant principal told me, he goes, I don't know if I can let you graduate if you just stop, if like, you come on average two days a week. And I looked at him and I was like, I know my GPA is too high and I know I'm high enough on your little class ranking list that I'm going to graduate. Looked him dead in the eye and went, you can't tell me I'm not going to. And then continued to show up to school two days a week because that's what we call depression, folks. You did get away with a lot. I got away with a lot of shit. And honestly, I really wish someone would have pushed back to me. I really wish someone would have pushed back because would it have been something if Natalie had learned boundaries in her early teens instead of her late twenties, wouldn't that have saved a lot of heartache? Yeah. I feel like they failed you in that regard. And then who knows whose attention I was trying to receive by cutting school all the time. It sure as hell wasn't the assistant principal because when he, called me on it I just got sassy and I do get sassy and that is like I got sassy today at work during the group chat because I thought it was a one-on-one chat and then I started to run my mouth and then I went fuck I'm in the group chat (laughs) oh no oh no it was just two it was just two messages and it was mostly like someone asked a question because we never know anything I went who's to say (laughs) Who's to say? And then I gave the unsatisfactory answer I had already received. I was like, heard this. Don't know if that's true. (laughs) And then, like, realized, like, I'm in the group chat. Everyone, including the person who gave me my unsatisfactory answer, is now just watching me be an asshole. And, like, honestly, like, I could use with... I mean, thank God we have that one friend who came into our lives because he knew another one of our married friends in high school. His name starts with a B, Dina. He's a very, very straight, very straight up and down. Thank God he calls me on my shit. Mm -hmm. Could we like, like give it up for him. He's the first and only man to look at me and go, that's not true. I'm sorry. What? I've decided it's true. That's not true, Namely. That's not how the story went. 
okay? You put the inflection on the wrong word to make it seem like that was the most important word. It was not that serious. <laughs> Damn, he said, nah, that ain't nah. it. Nah, he's done that to me in front of strangers. He's, <laughs> he's like, cap. she's lying. I'm like, I'm not lying. <laughs> like she's not lying but she sure as hell is making this seem like a bigger deal than it is that's yeah you do have a tendency to do that yes Mm -hmm. he's like she's not lying but she's definitely playing it up for the comedy i'm like it's all good for the bit (laughs) it's okay though guys it's all okay for the bit (laughs) for the clout for the clout for the clout we're doing it for the clout but yeah if only I had been told things like, that's not a normal thing for a 13-year-old to say to their 22-year-old teacher. (laughs) Yeah. It's not normal. Maybe you should stop. Where were the adults? Where were my adults? They did nothing. That's going to be the name of my book. Where were my adults? Sucks. It sucks. But yeah, that's how I was attention-seeking. It wasn't cute. Like, (laughs) Yeah, it's not ever... It wasn't cute. And, like, really, the internet sex that I was having really just scratched the surface of it. The cringe, man, when you think back on it. Could you imagine if one parent had ever walked into my bedroom at 1230 at night while I'm click-clacking in a way like, or, like a gremlin and they turn on the light and I'm like... <laughs> Hey, family, what are you doing? How many men are you having sex with on the internet tonight? Just the one because I'm a monogamous at heart. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Just the one because I hyper focus. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, if only one person, one adult had ever looked at me and went, hey, so like, there's kids and then there's a fence and then there's their teachers. <laughs> And these are some of the phrases that don't cross this fence. You telling me that you're my cupcake, that can't cross the fence. (laughs) You calling me Johnny Cash in the hallway all the time. One time in in that college professor's, when I was just visiting him during office hours, I had really bad cramps. (laughs) And before I was on a birth control... I was such a bitch about cramps because my cramps were horrendous. And that's probably why I'm still letting birth control poison me. (laughs) So, because I'm scared of the cramps. Yeah. So, I, like, crawled up the stairs into his office. I'm at a full 90 degrees. And, like, because he had a back injury, I knew he'd have pain pills. And I was like, I need something. (laughs) I need something, I need something now. There was another professor, in a, a female professor in his office, and she was just looking at me wild-eyed because I had, like, come from the abyss, <laughs> just, like, sh- banshee shrieky. And he's like, and then he starts making excuses for me. He goes, oh, um, mm, you know, Natalie, it was sunny today, and I do know that you get migraines, because, like, I'm not going to tell anyone that I have cramps. I'm just, like, screaming. I'm like, I need a pill. I need a pill. I just need a pill. And he's like, uh-huh, yeah. And um, so Natalie, and he's, like, trying to explain this away to the professor who's like, why would Natalie just show up in your office asking for pills? Um. He's like, so Natalie gets migraines. She gets them from the sun. She's had to skip class a time or two because of them. Like, are you nauseous yet, Natalie? And he's like shaking out Excedrin or something for me. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. He just like lick it off of my hand. And I'm like, Dr. Thunder. (laughs) Give me the Dr. Thunder. fucking Dr. Thunder came back. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dr. Thunder, wash it all down. (laughs) But you know what's kind of fucked up about that is he was, like, literally lying because he knew how weird it looked. Right. He knew how weird it looked. That's kind of not good. That, like, I, like, swam creatured into his omelet. I was like, I need a pill. Anything that'll make the pain stop. <laughs> he should have asked more questions. For real, he should have. He should have just, like, auto-filled it by my gr- He should be like, what kind of pain is it, Emily? Is it a mental pain? <laughs> Is it a, is it an emotional pain? Have you been collecting pills from other people? <laughs> like, right, for real. What the hell is happening? God, I did. 
I used to let the prof I used to wear flip flops on purpose to the professor's class who everyone thought that he had a foot fetish and everyone wore socks to his class except for me. <laughs> and they went, why do you wear flip flops here? And I was like, I don't want to try very hard in this class. Ayo. And I now I don't have to. <laughs> wow. He mouth kissed me at homecoming when like I hugged him to say hello instead of kissing me on the cheek. He did one of those old man moves where they just mouth kiss you. <laughs> like, like it was straight up Italy. And then, <laughs> And then he just like wandered away and I'm still just like raging out at homecoming and finally and finally I went I looked at my friends that I was with and I was like, Did he just mouth kiss me mouth kiss me? And they were like, Yes. And I was like, Did he mouth kiss any of you? And they went, No. <laughs> They're like, This is not okay. I was like, just me. It's just me. I was like, ah, it's because I had bad boundaries in my early twenties. <laughs> oh my god. Because I had bad boundaries in my early 20s. But yeah, why are you wearing flip-flops? I don't want to try very hard in this class. <laughs> my brain supply could go other places. And it's not going here. Yeah. So I have bad... I had bad boundaries. My boundaries have improved. Um, now I'm just wary of all men. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, what do you want? Ugh. <laughs> well, look, he's looking at me. I don't like it. Mm. Oh, why are you looking at me? Ah, goblin. But yeah, no, I used to get attention in some really fucked up ways. Just always trying to fill that trauma hole in my heart. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like it's also, you're still a kid and like all those adults needed to be, you know, setting the boundaries truly. Because kids can't set boundaries well. Like, you literally have to teach them how to do that. Yeah. So, I, I feel like uh, a lot of people failed you there. So Yeah, if only. And maybe that's why my parents... I think my parents were just going around it the wrong way. They just tried to keep me, like, humble and dull instead of being like, hey, you don't talk that way to grown men, okay? Right. Talk, talk that way to men your own age, but don't do it to grown men. Yeah, for sure. That's weird. That's because parents when we were growing up, didn't know how to talk to their kids about the the weird ways of hormones and That's dopamine true. and sex. I can't, like, I can't wait to watch Gen Z raise kids. Oh, that'll be so interesting. They're gonna have, like, board books on dopamine and boundaries. They're gonna be like, this is dopamine. It is a chemical in your brain that will make you believe that everything's okay. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Little baby right. Einstein books on dopamine. <laughs> oh my goodness. We should have a we should find a brain doctor. If any of the brain doctors are listening right now, we should find a brain doctor who on this podcast could explain dopamine to us. Because I just oh, feel like it's a so buzzword. I feel like it's a buzzword that I've latched onto and I'm like, don't mind me just chasing dopamine. I don't know what that means. There wasn't a Grey's Anatomy episode on dopamine. Nobody knows what's happening. No one knows what it is. It's like gluten. No one knows what it is. <laughs> I don't know what I thought gluten was, but apparently they can still eat eggs, and I'm so confused. I don't even know anymore. What do you mean you're confused that they can eat eggs? Eggs I don't, don't have thought, gluten? Why did I think that eggs have gluten? I don't know. Isn't gluten like a, a wheat chemical? Someone help. <laughs> what's going on i just figured it was one of those super strict things like you can't have anything you know i thought it was like a molecule in wheat i don't know now you know who'll know oh. meg cabot my favorite author this is a callback <laughs> to a former episode to the one that got away meg cabot will know she has i think it's celiac disease is that the one where you ha can't have yes food? celiac yeah so she has it <laughs> reach out to her and, and I'm going to DM her tonight and be like, dear Meg, um, once again, I don't understand what dopamine or gluten is. <laughs> um, could you maybe explain it? <laughs> Just, could you imagine you and I talking to a doctor for an hour? We'd be like. <laughs> but sometimes one of my eyes is more open and the other one isn't. And, and what's wrong? 
So sometimes I fall asleep when I'm doing things to myself at night and I leave it in there on and I was just, and then I'm really tired the next day. Did like, did it just like take all my energy out? Is my vibrator a energy vampire? Is my is my vibrator an energy vampire? Because sometimes I do fall asleep. <laughs> I do, and then I wake up. I'm like, that's still happening. <laughs> Jesus. Today, this is why I can't have kids. Today, I was on the speakerphone with one of my friends, and I wanted to lay down because I'm so sore from beginning working out again. And I wanted to lay down because I could feel all of the toxins that you get when your muscles release into when you work out. I don't know. Someone explained it to me one time during a workout class. I need a foam roller. Um, I could feel all the toxins and they were making me sleepy and they made my, me nauseous. So I wanted to lay down and my friend went, put your work laptop on, in bed with you. So they like, so you can just lay down. And I went, my work laptop doesn't go in my bedroom. That's where I masturbate. Cause you know, boundaries. <laughs> Like, Good that's where I masturbate. I was like, I masturbate in here. And she went, hey, <laughs> you're on speaker, which means that her niece that she was babysitting was in the room. And I went, make the child leave the room. <laughs> For real. It's not my fault. <laughs> she should have known. It's not my fault. Put your earbuds in. Yeah. Put your pods in. But yeah, I was like, make the kid leave the room. I was like... My work computer can't be in my bedroom. That's where I masturbate. Because <laughs> I have work-life balance. I love that. You have to create zones in your home when you have to work from home. This is a masturbating room. This is a working room. I, I feel you. You can be naked in here. You can be naked and create art in here. Sometimes I am, because, you know, my art table faces the window now. Sometimes I am just, like, in my robe, and it's not always tied all the way. I I've feel done like them. that's a, a great anecdote for this episode. It's just you in your robe. Is it my attention In front of the window. Yes. In front of the window that faces Meyer. You're right. You want all of Meyer to be seeing you in your robe. In my yeah. robe. Oh, I just... Okay, we are over on time. Oh, fuck. Okay. It's because I have boundary issues. <laughs> so how you have good boundaries and also bad boundary issues? Like, you're on both. <laughs> like, you're good and you're bad at it somehow. Life is a journey, and sometimes <laughs> there are potholes. <laughs> Put it on a notebook. <laughs> life is a... Life. Uh, Garth Brooks once said... You know, a dream is like a river, ever-changing as it goes. <laughs> the dreamer's just a vessel. <laughs> and sometimes I dream without one of my paddles. <laughs> so, Garth Brooks, if you're listening, I would love tickets to any and all of your shows. <laughs> I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> That's, fine. That's like when I would. That's what, like when I met Kevin Sorbo and I asked my sister if she's going to go up with me. And she went, nah, bro. And she just like, shoved me right that in front of him. <laughs> but, like, he could hear you. She's like, that's on him. That's on Hercules. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for manifestations and takeaways? Yeah. Okay. So I am ready to claim my space in the world and start to, like, move forward understanding that I take up space in this world it does put me as in a vulnerable position to take up space and to get attention but I am warranted to attention for anything that's happening in my life because sometimes you get positive sometimes you get negative attention but when I'm doing great things I am ready to walk proud of myself and the person I've grown to be what I'd like to manifest is that the relationships in my life begin to mirror the growth I've made when it comes to self-assuredness and boundaries and calling me on my own shit. 
I want to collect more people in my life that thrive in my creative and positive lifestyle and the pace that I keep up in the, with in the world. All right. So for me, I think I've realized that I'm not feeling urgency in getting a relationship right now because I'm, I'm more comfortable being myself and therefore looking for something more than just someone giving me attention and I manifest for myself that the next person I get involved with romantically that I'm able to be my most authentic self with and for for the people I use for attention like for real my bad um (laughs) I was awful and you deserve someone who actually wants your time so Oh, for you, that is, so. And to the men who gave me attention when I should have had it, how dare you? <laughs> do better. <laughs> for And also, yeah, that if you're an adult, All right. do better. Um, do better. All right, thank you for being with us um, as we take a deep dive into some of our not-so-great behaviors. Make sure to like and subscribe because you never know when we'll have another humble moment where we'll shit on ourselves instead of on the guys that we were in relationships with. Leave us a five-star review and a comment about what you're enjoying, and we can start highlighting great reviews. Um, Our Instagram is at Men I've Tolerated Pod. My Instagram and my TikTok is at nablyk124. You can still tag us in your story while you're listening, and we will leave you a manifestation on our story. I've been writing some wicked sweet mantras, so it would be really great to start sharing that with our tolerators and our listeners. And if you have questions about your relationships or anything you need advice on, Go ahead and give us a shout at men I've tolerated before at gmail.com. And you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is at ms period caboose. And there will be links to all my other social media and come hang out with me. And next week is going to be super exciting because we're going to have a guest. If everything goes to plan and the schedule still works, it's going to be Caitlin Grant, uh, the host of Plug It Up. And we're going to uh, get to talk to her about Dina and I's favorite genre of movies, horror movies, and the women that are represented in them. Yeah. (laughs) I'm so excited. That's going to be so fun. I'm so hyped. And remember, tolerators, you don't have to smile through anything that you're tolerating, even if it's your own attention seeking that you're tolerating. Smiles are for joy and for joy only. Love you all. (laughs) 